Okay, so today we're going to be talking about balancing con rods. Uh, for those that have seen my previous video, I've been building a con rod balancing uh, set of apparatus. Essentially, we have a pivot point here where we balance or where we hang one end of the con rod, and we have a pivot point on the back of the scales here where we weigh the other end of the con rod. So the idea is that you take a con rod and put it on both pivot points. Make sure it's not touching any other surfaces, so it's just resting clearly on those bearings. And then that would be weighing just the small end, in this case, of that con rod. The reason we do this is so that we can make sure all the small ends weigh the same amount and all of the big ends weigh the same amount. If they don't, the small ends will remove a bit of material from here to make them so they do all weigh the same amount. And on the big ends, although people often remove it here from the bearing cap, uh, I've read that it's probably not the best thing to do because this actually gives the bearing cap the rigidity to keep this perfectly round. Um, you don't want that bore going anything other than perfectly round. So we're going to be taking material off here and here in equal portions to get these to all weigh the same, but more importantly weigh the same in each aspect of it, small end and big end. So I'm going to go ahead, turn the scales on, set them to zero and weigh all of these. Um, when I weigh them, I weigh them this way up and then also rotate them 180 degrees and weigh them this way up just to make sure that we are getting accurate readings. We need to make sure that the bearing doesn't get stuck on the joints between the cap and the, and the conrod itself. Um, if it does, then we'll end up with a sort of friction in our, in our weighing mechanism and it won't be accurate. So you'll notice this isn't actually straight when it's weighing, it's pulled over. That's to avoid the bearing lining perfectly up with the, uh, the joint between the cap and the conrod. So that way up, the small end is 144.4 grams. The other way up, we're 144.4 grams. So is exactly what we want to see. So that means that they're consistent. So just right up there, and then I'll go on and weigh the others. So that's all of the con rods weighed. Um, we have 144.4, 144.5, 144.7, and 144.4. So a total variance of 0 0.3 of a gram across the con rods, uh, the small ends that is. So it means on this one we need to remove 0 0.3 of a gram of material. Um, so we're going to take it off this surface here and I'm just going to run it up and down a sheet of sandpaper. So I've got some 180 grit sandpaper and I hold it as flat to the sandpaper as I can and simply remove material. Rotate it so that we get an equal amount off both sides. Okay, so I've just finished doing the small ends of the rods. So you can see here quite a lot of material removed from the small end here, here, and here. So all four rods now have a small end weight of 144.4. So I'm now going to remove the pivot from my scales here and move it into the top hole so that we can then start weighing the big ends. So I've just con. weighed all of the big ends of the con rods and we have 377.0, 376.7, 377.2 and 377.0. So our target weight is a 376.7, which means we need to remove 0.3 of a gram from these two con rod big ends and 0.5 of a gram from this con rod big end. Quite a, a, a lot of material to remove, so I'm going to get on and do that and show you the results. Okay, so this is a few hours later, all of the con rods have been weighed and material has been removed from each of the con rods. You can see here on the big ends and there on the small ends, they now all weigh the same across the small ends, the big ends and as complete units. I have made a few changes um, to the mechanism that I've been using to weigh them, so I'll just bring you closer. This is a slightly improved version, so we've got an extra bearing here, which is actually a wheel bearing off a R6, I think. Um, 
which just helps with the resistance around this friction point where the conrod and the um, and the cap meet, and it stops it binding as it sits on that point. So so it does actually give you a true weight. Um, but yeah, those four are all done, all the same weight. Material move there, material move there, um, and now to get the pistons out and weigh those. Okay, so we've now weighed up the conrods, and I put those away here. They are all balanced, small, big ends, and the entire components. So they're all the same weight. So now we're looking at the Wiseco pistons. So got the four pistons, the four wrist pins, and the four ring packs. Um, the ring packs all weigh 19.6 grams each, taken out of the boxes, obviously. Um, so that's we can forget those for the process of our calculation. The pistons, however, we've got one that's 288.3 grams, another 288.0, 288.1, and 287.7. So we have actually um, 0.6 of a gram difference between the highest and the lowest weight of our pistons. Um, and in terms of the wrist pins, they're all <coughs> 65.4, except this one that's 65.5. So the first thing we'll do is take the heaviest wrist pin and put it with the lightest piston. So that saves us a gram of balancing effort. So just cross this out to make sure I know what I've done. Um, and now we have to remove weight from the pistons um, to get them to be all the same um, weight across the across the fork. Okay, so I've just finished working on the heaviest piston, and you can see I've chamfered the edges on the inside of the crown here, chamfered this down, and then sanded it to give a smooth surface. Compared with the lightest piston, you see quite a clear difference in the material removed. These are now identical weights, so our heaviest piston is the same weight now. As the lightest piston, um, the other two there's much less material to remove, which is great. So I'm going to start on those. Um, you've got to take 0.3 of a gram off here and 0.4 of a gram off here. Okay, so that's all four pistons now balanced. Uh, just to show you how I've been doing it, I've been using a metal grinding bit on my Dremel and uh, to take off the bulk of the material, and then just sanding it flat with um, some, I think it's 180 grit. Sandpaper, um, not particularly sophisticated, but it's come up neatly enough. You can barely tell that I've been working here. It looks like it's from the factory still, um, and they're all balanced. So it's now time to get the connecting rods and the pistons put together. So I've got my piston assemblies ready to go uh, when I want to build the engine again. Okay, so putting the pistons and con rods together. The key link here is the wrist pin. Um, the wrist pin will slide in to our piston all the way through um, and the conrod will go in the middle. To hold the wrist pin in place we have two circlips. So there's a retaining clip in this groove you can see here and there's the other groove. So once we've got the wrist pin put through we have to get this clip into the groove. I'm using a trim tool from a um, car trim set to lever the clips in place. These are made of nylon plastic so I don't damage the pistons. Um, I have seen people use screwdrivers but you do mark the pistons. Not that it's on the actual um, compression surface or anything but it's still better to use a plastic tool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put all of those together. First one done. So there you go. Gun rod, wrist pin, retaining clips both sides. Wrist pin isn't going anywhere, con rod is secured, and that's one assembly, ready to go. Okay, so that's four piston assemblies, ready to go. Bearings are back in, there's a smidgen of oil around the outside of them, and I put them in just to, to um, lubricate them, so you can see some oil squirting out there. Um, wrist pin's done, clips in both sides, ready to go. Uh, next task, put those away somewhere safely. And then start putting the head back together. So still got the valves and valve springs in there, but needs the um, the rockers, all of the caps on top of the valves putting back in, making sure the valve clearance is the correct camshafts, um, and then the head should be ready to go as well. And then back to the workshop to actually put the engine together.